What's happening? I'm Brian Tong, and welcome to the Apple Bite for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. And we start things off today with the latest product rumors. Now, I know you're tired about iPad 3. Maybe you aren't, but let's talk iPod Nano. You know, I'm not really the biggest fan of the device, but maybe they'll win me over after new photos were released of a Nano casing that appears to support a rear-facing camera. Now, we've seen them in the past, but MIC Gadget is saying this picture is real, and it's a two-month-old prototype. They report Apple is having issues with the 1.3 megapixel camera taking overexposed photos even though the user interface for the camera is finished and that's what's holding them back. But who really wants to take pictures with the Nano anyways? That's great. Looks good. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. Be the lion. You are one with the lion. You, you are a lion. Okay. So I guess there's someone out there. Now, Boy Genius Report provides us with the iPad 3 rumor of the week with photos of screenshots from Apple's iBoot development and debugging software that reveals details and a new application processor that is presumably part of the new A6 system on a chip after the A4 and A5 chips have shown earlier model numbers. Now, the report says it's still expected to be a quad-core processor and supports the claim that the new iPad will support LTE, GSM, and CDMA 3G networks on the single device. Now, rumors also pointed to February as the announcement for the iPad 3, but that was recently debunked after The Loop reported there will be no February event at all. So, for those of you hoping I would lose that bet about my armpit hair, it looks like all bets are off. Oh, Brian, I wanted that. I'm really sorry, Apple Biters, but you'll have to blame that on the big A. And in not so surprising news, a new report from Piper Jaffrey says a major TV component supplier disclosed that Apple has contacted them to ask about their products. Rumors have been flying all over the place from screen size to release dates, and this is another product that the rumor mill will not leave alone. All right, let's take a breather and check out our app of the week. Check out this new game called Paper Monster. The best way I can describe it is it's like Little Big Planet for iOS, and it's a throwback platformer that's a 99 cent universal app. It's a 2D side scroller with 3D graphics with the all important double jump. Now you collect buttons which help you get you credits to then purchase different clothing to customize your character or you can go the lazy way and buy your own buttons. But check it out, it's a game for you or the kitties that you'll love. <laughs> Look at how high he jumps. <laughs> He's so cute. All right, back to the show, guys. Now, uh, we wanted to give you a follow-up to the Foxconn and Apple story we reported on last week. The day after the news broke, Apple CEO Tim Cook sent a memo to employees that leaked out to the internet, and he reiterated Apple's stance. Cook wrote, we care about every worker in our worldwide supply chain. Any accident is deeply troubling, and any issue with working conditions is cause for concern. Any suggestion that we don't care is patently false and offensive to us. Now, the New York Times responded by saying they still stand by their reporting, but really the point here is that Apple has such an influence that they can affect real change in workers' conditions. They're doing it right now, but they can even do better. All right, let's check out some quick bites. Apple released the Mac OS 10.7.3 update recently, but many users are experiencing widespread crashing of apps and artwork errors in the crash notice. So the solution is to use the combo version of the update right now. That should fix the issue. And yes, you can update it over your current running version of 10.7.3. Now also, I berated the first release of Final Cut Pro X, but Apple has now released updates for multi-camera support, advanced chroma key and XML support, and motion and compressor are also receiving updates. So that's been coming for a long time. And if you're frustrated with iTunes Match like I am because it sometimes matches your explicit versions of songs with censored versions instead, Cult of Mac reports Apple is said to be working on a fix. There's no workaround at the moment, so we'll keep you posted with that. And let's leave you with a fun little video. There's been stories about Siri and how she has trouble understanding Scottish people, so comedian Gavin McInnes decided to give her a try in this video. Gonna give, us, uh, gonna give me a hand here getting something to eat, and uh, like a, something simple like a chip butty or maybe a uh, Jimmy Dodger and then a pint of I don't know, you know, McCune's Lager or Caledonian 80. I'm not aware of any meetings about being without Mahatma Johnny Georgia and Joni Chip Bachi. Look you, you f I need a sandwich, a jammy dodger. It's just bread and jam. No need for profanity. Oh, for f sake, that's us. It's a good laugh, but beware of the constant F-bombs throughout the video. That's not for the kiddies. 
All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Email us at theapplebite at cnet.com, and we'll get to them. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time for another Bite of the Apple.